And all it really is, is we just need to combine rates of change. So we're used to just having dy on dx. But what happens in these questions is that the question itself doesn't give you enough information to work out dy on dx directly. So what you need to do is separate it into two rates of change like you see here. And you have enough information to work out each of these individually. And when you multiply them together, you can see that this dt and that dt will cancel to give you dy on dx which is exactly the same as your original rate of change. Yeah, so that's all you need to do. And because you can do that with dt, as you can imagine, you can do it with any other combination. So you can have du here, so those will cancel as well to give you dy on dx, or you could even have da as we have here. So you can have any combination as long as you know that when you cancel those values, it gives you exactly the same rate of change as you initially had. And all you really, the best way to think about this really is just fractions. So all you have is these two fractions here that when you multiply and cancel, it gives you the original fraction. And I think if you start thinking about it like that, it really makes this topic quite simple. But where people run into trouble in this rates of change is because the questions are very much problem solving questions. So it's more getting the information from the question rather than the maths itself that's difficult. All right, best way to learn rates of change is to do questions. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Let's start off with question one. So in question one, we have the radius R of a sphere is increasing at 0.3 centimeters per second. Okay, so note we've already been given information here. Now, we wanna find the rate of increase of a surface area when the radius equals to 10. So what you wanna do is firstly, just write out the information that you have. So we know that the rate of change for the radius is 0.3 centimeters per second. Now that centimeters refers to the radius, so that's why it's dr and it's over seconds, which is time, so that's why it's on dt, okay? But you just assume that if something is rate of change with that, it's normally over time. Doesn't always have to be, but generally it is. And what else do we know? We know we're gonna be working with surface area. So the first thing you do is just write out that equation and we differentiate that. So in this case, take two down and that becomes eight pi r. And because we're differentiating your surface area in terms of r, that's why it's dA on dr there. Can you see that? Great. And now finally, we work out what do we actually need to find out? And this is a rate of increase for the surface area. So that's going to be d capital A, which represents surface area over dt because it's rate of change. Now, this is where we need to take, separate them into two rates of change because we can't work this out straight away. So I want you to think about it like this. dA on dt is gonna to equal to dA on an unknown multiplied by an unknown on dt, okay? So any combination could go there. But what is a really good way to find out what goes there is have a look at the information you already have you see that you already have dr on dt, so it only makes sense for dr to go here. And since you put dr there, you must put dr here as well. And it's lucky that we also have da on dr as well. So the best way to work this out is by separating it into da on dr and dr on dt. And now you just need to substitute in those values. So eight pi r multiplied by 0.3, but there's still that unknown of the r there. But remember, it's told you when r equals to 10. So you just need to substitute that in. And now it's simple calculator work. And we find out the rate of increase for the surface area is 24 pi centimeters squared per second. Now, I stress that squared because I don't want you to get marked down after doing all this hard work for forgetting to put centimeters squared for your surface area, okay? Great, let's have a look at part B now. So here, we wanna find the rate of increase for volume. Now, remember for surface area, how we wrote out the equation? So we wanna write out the equation for volume as well. 
and we want to find out the derivative of that. So we take the 3 down, so it becomes 3 times 4 pi r squared, yeah, on 3, and that will cancel to give you 4 pi r squared. And the rate of increase for volume will be dv on dt. And again, I want you to consider this. So dv on dt is going to be have to separate into two separate rates of change, and this will have to be dv on something multiplied by something on dt. Yeah, since we already know that dv, what dv on dr is, it makes sense to put dr here. And we also know that dr on dt, yeah, equals a 0 0.3 as well. So you just substitute this from here and 0 0.3 from that information there. And again, we have that unknown of r, but remember it's when i equals to 10, and that's where we get that 10 from, okay? And we just calculated that and gives you 120 pi centimeters cubed for, per second. Because we're working with volume, so in this case, it's going to be centimeters cubed. And so you can see that the maths in all of this is not difficult, but what is difficult is finding out where you get the information from. So whenever you see volume, just know to write out the equation of the volume and differentiate that. Okay, great. So that was question one. Let's move on to question two now. Okay, here we have a sphere again, and we're being told that it's expanding, so its surface area is increasing at 24 centimeters second per second, and the radius is r equals to 12. And now we want to find out the rate of increase for the radius. So what I want you to do, write out all that information. First thing we know is that the, sphere, the surface area of the sphere is changing at 24 centimeters per squared per second, so that's dA of your surface area on dt equals 24. Now, what else do we know? Since we're working with surface area, you see that word, you write out the equation for that. And we, what do we do? Derive that again, good. So dA on dr is eight pi r. And now we get to the step where we wanna find the rate of increase for the radius, which is gonna be dr on dt, right? And we think dr on something, not sure what, multiplied by something on dt. Since we already have found out dA on dt, it makes sense to put dA here and dA down here. Okay, so we're splitting it into these two separate rates of change. Now you can see that we know that dA on dt is 24, but we don't directly have dr on dA but we do have dA on dr here. And this is where I want you to know that you can actually flip that. So once you flip dA on dr, this essentially gets flipped as well. So this becomes one on eight pi r. Can you see that? How we've just flipped that over to dR and dA and this becomes one on eight pi r multiplied by 24. So the r we're told is equal to 12, substitute that in and calculator work tells us it's one on four pi centimeters per second for the radius. Okay, so the important thing you need to remember from this question is that sometimes you may not directly get one of the rates of change, but just have a look because you do need to flip some of them. All right, so just be aware of that. Great, let's go on to finding the rate of increase for the volume now. So we see volume, we write out the equation and remember that the derivative of that, dv on dr was four pi r squared from before. Okay, and from part A, so in the previous question, we have dr on dt, and that equals to one on four pi, so we can use that again. Now, rate of increase for volume is just dv on dt. So remember for this case, we want dv on something and dr on, something there. So here we can see that because we have dv on dr, we want to put dr there. And that's how we work that out. Now we have 4 pi r squared from here and 1 on 4 pi from, from part a. And in this case the 4 pi and the 4 pi just cancel to leave us with r squared and now we can just substitute in 12 there which gives us 144 centimeters cubed per second. All right. 
So what you need to take away from this question is that you sometimes you do need to use information from the previous part of the question. So here you can see that we needed this from part A and in your working out, I just want you to write from part eight, part A. So you show the examiner where you're getting that information from. All right, great. Okay, let's move on to question three. So question three is more of a problem solving question. So we have a weather balloon and it's rising vertically at three meters per second. So that's information of rate of change there. Now we have a person that is standing on the ground that's 300 meters away from the point where the balloon was initially released. And we want to find the rate of change of the distance between the person and the balloon and when the balloon is 400 meters high. So I think one of the difficulties of this question is actually just drawing the diagram. So I'm just gonna give you a couple of seconds to have a go yourself and we can see if it looks like the diagram here. Okay, so did it look anything like this? So what we have here is just the balloon, yeah? And Y represents the distance the balloon has traveled. Whereas P is that person. Remember how they were 300 meters away from where originally the balloon was released? And Z, is just the distance between the observer and the balloon. Okay, so that's what all those values mean. Now, as with the previous question, let's write out all the information. So firstly, you have a look here and you see, well, that's a right angled triangle, right? So what can I do with that? Well, I can make that into a Pythagoras equation. So I know that Z squared equals to Y squared plus 300 squared. Okay, and that's gonna come into use later. What else can we get from this question? We know the balloon is rising at three meters per second, which means that the rate of change for Y, which is dy and dt, equals to three. Can you see that? Yeah? And finally, what do we actually need to work out? Well, that's the rate of change of the distance between the observer and the balloon. And remember, that was Z. So this is actually dz on dt. And it's when y equals to 400, because that's when the balloon is 400 meters high. Okay, so we've got all that information here, and let's work with that. So remember how with our volume and surface area, we need to derive those equations? Exactly the same thing. We want to derive this Pythagoras equation. So I just square root both sides, and this we can make into the power of half. And remember, when we derive this, you take the half down and subtracting one from half gives you negative half and because it's a chain rule we need to multiply by the derivative of the bracket which just happens to be take the two down 2y and the two and the two cancel there okay and the y stays as a numerator and because this is to the power of negative half that's why it's on the bottom as denominator and square root all right so that's dz on dy now let's, let, now let's consider how we're gonna get dz on dt. So it has to be dz on something and something on dt. That's how we separate it. And since we've just worked out what dz and dy is, it makes complete sense to put dy there. And we have to put dy there as well. Now, remember how dz and dy, we just worked out to be this? And luckily, we also know that dy on dt, which is the rate of change for y, was three there. But we still have unknown values of y, and so we look here and we, we say, oh, that's right, it's when the balloon was 400 meters high, so y equal to 400. All you need to do is just substitute that in, and we work out that it equals to 2.4 meters per second. So this is the rate of change of this z there. So a couple of points that's difficult in the question. The first thing is really just working out that triangle there because it's hard converting words into a diagram. And once you have that, the other difficulty is knowing to use the Pythagoras equation. So you're always thinking to yourself, what equation can I make from the information they give me? And whatever equation you have, remember you're gonna to have to differentiate it because it's gonna come up somewhere along there.